Welcome to my screencast on how a teacher might use a learning management system like Moodle to facilitate formative assessment. And so as you can see here, I've got one, two, three courses on my uh, Moodle shell. And I'm going to click on one of them, Science 9. And that pulls up many different things. I organize my course based on unit of study, so chapter one, biological diversity, and so on. Chapter two, chemical change. And a lot of the things that I use Moodle for are self-assessments for the kids, practice tests, uh, sometimes we call it e-assessment. And so I'm going to click on one of the self-assessments that I would give the kids after teaching them a certain topic. For example, just last week we were studying elements of the periodic table. And so you can see with my cursor that I would assign this either in class for them to try or possibly as a homework assignment. And as a teacher, a practice test or a self-assessment like this can provide valuable feedback to guide your teaching practices. So let's click on this. When I design the self-assessment, I usually set targets for the kids. And so the students read this first so that they know what curriculum standards or objectives uh, are met by trying this. Uh, then I can set the grading method and usually I say whatever they get on their last attempt. Now you don't have to count grades. In fact, uh, the purists believe that formative assessment means no grades whatsoever. However, there are some books and some uh, writings by Rick Stiggins who says as long as the kid gets multiple chances at improving their grade, then there's nothing wrong with uh, using grades for assessment purposes. Uh, so let's look at some of the tabs here. There's the results tabs, the preview tab, and the edit tab where you can edit the questions within the practice test or self-assessment. Uh, let's click on the preview tab just so you get a sense for what this self-assessment's about. So the kids have to know what the chemical symbol is for each of those. And in addition, I've also added a few multiple choice type questions for them to try. And let's click on results. And as you can see, it pulls up the results of how the kids did on this self-assessment. Um, our Moodle course is set up that it archives four years worth of results and so as you can see the number of attempts that is showing up for me is 264 but I can pare that down to this year's results so I go to the pull down menu and maybe I just want to look at one of my classes science 9b and so now it pulls up the results for just science 9b and you can see the progression of the students. So this student, she tried once, she got 23 out of 27, then 25, then 25, and then finally 27 out of 27 on her last attempt. And that's highlighted in green. Uh, so kids try these more than once in hopes to get mastery. Each time they try it, the questions shuffle as well as the distractors A, B, C, and D also shuffle. And that just helps to minimize copying. Uh, let's go to the item analysis. And so now I get an item breakdown. There's the matching. I can see where kids' mistakes are, so where some kids are making mistakes. I usually scan for questions where I'm getting low percentages from the attempts. So for example, when the students tried this one, only 74% got that one right, 84 on that one, 68. So 
again, I might ask myself, do they really truly understand the difference between what metals and non-metals are? I might relook at reviewing the topic of metals versus non-metals before I move on to what I wanted to teach them the next day. And so if I scan down, this one is really low, and so I definitely need to highlight and think about another way to teach what this question is asking the kids. And so, for example, it's talking about horizontal rows, and uh, I have to sort of decide what my strategy will be at the start of class in regards to ensuring that they get this concept. It's also valuable to know that many of the kids picked A or C instead of B, and so I need to th think out why, what is it about A and C that is making them pick those two things. So as you can see, this self-assessment provides valuable feedback for me, the teacher. Uh, let's go back to another one because I want to show you one other way that I use Moodle to help students and that is through direct feedback on each question. So let's click on the reproduction self-assessment and again I set the targets for the kids. What is this uh, what are the curriculum objectives and then let's go to the preview and here are the different questions scroll down and I'm gonna submit because uh, when I submit you can see if I don't put an answer in of course it's wrong and it shows up in red now this one I didn't provide feedback but one of my goals is to try and provide feedback Let's go to one of the assessments back on my Moodle course where I type in feedback for the kids so that if they do get it wrong, they know what their next step might be uh, to fix their mistakes. And so let's do the topic practice quiz. Let's go to preview. And then let's go to the bottom and hit submit. And hit OK. And now on some of the questions, I type in red feedback to help give the kids an idea of if they got it wrong, where to go next. There's one. So this one, the question is trying to assess the law of conservation of mass. And it, so it says, if they get it wrong, this pops up, which I'm now highlighting. And it says, remember, the mass of the reactants must equal the mass of the products. For this to work, the number of atoms on the reactant side, the left, must be equal to the number of the atoms on the product side. And so I'm giving them specific feedback when they get the question wrong so that when they try it again, some relearning has occurred. And so th this is one quick way that we might be able to use a learning management system to help facilitate formative assessment. I hope you've enjoyed my video clip and uh, have a great have a great day.